Hello, welcome to News in Brief on Vantage TV, where we bring you the top stories that made the rounds within the week. My name is Anita Macaulay. Let's get started. On the national news, ASU extends strike by four weeks. The Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, has again extended the ongoing strike by four weeks. President of the Union, Professor Emmanuel Osodeke, who disclosed this in the statement, said the decision was to give the government enough time to resolve all outstanding issues with the lecturers. Noting that the body conveyed an emergency National Executive Committee NEC meeting of the association at the University of Abuja on Sunday, the ASU president said the extension took immediate effect from August 1st. Hmm. Nigerian students, I'm so sorry. Habalis dragged CAC to court over refusal to register association. The Traditional Religious Practitioners Association, TRPA, in Nigeria has dragged the Corporate Affairs Commission, CAC, to the Federal High Court in Enugu for the Commission's refusal to register the traditional worshippers as a religious body, such as the Christian Association of Nigeria, CAN, and the Nigerian Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, NSCIA. In their application to the courts, through their counsel, OBK Odo, Esquire, the traditional religious worshippers contend that by the denial for registration, the CAC has discriminated against the plaintiffs on the ground of their religious worship. Contrary to the provision of Section 42 of the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. On to the international news, the US kills Al-Qaeda chief in Kabul drone strike. A United States drone strike early on this week killed Al-Qaeda chief Al-Zariri at a hideout in Kabul. The 71-year-old Egyptian, who was Osama bin Laden's successor, was on the balcony of a three-story house in Afghan capital when targeted with two Hellfire missiles after dawn on Sunday. Zarari's assassination is the biggest blow to Al-Qaeda Al -Qaeda, since U.S. Special Forces killed Osama bin Laden in 2011. President Joe Biden said in a summary televised address reacted on Monday, declaring that justice has been delivered to the families of the 9-11 attacks. He also added that he hoped Zarari's death will bring closure to families of the 3,000 people killed in the U.S. on September 11, 2001 right to abortion maintained in Kansas state constitution. Kansas voters have decided to maintain the right to an abortion in their state's constitution by voting no on a proposed constitutional amendment. This was the first popular vote on abortion since the U.S. Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade in June. The vote comes after a 2019 state Supreme Court ruling found the state constitution does protect the right to an abortion. The proposed amendment stated, because Kansas value both women and children, the constitution of the state of Kansas does not require government funding of abortion and does not create or secure a right to abortion. China-Taiwan tensions. China's President Xi Jinping has said reunification with Taiwan must be fulfilled as heightened tensions over the island continue. Why? Well, while Taiwan considers itself a sovereign state and an independent country with its own constitution and democratically elected leaders, China sees Taiwan as a breakaway province that will eventually be reclaimed under Beijing's control and by force if necessary. This week, U.S. Speaker Nancy Pelosi visited Taiwan as a symbol of the America's solidarity with Taiwan despite warnings from Biden's administration officials about China's potential reaction. China's Foreign Minister Wang Yi has since called Pelosi's visit a complete travesty, warning that those who play with fire will perish. Beijing said the trip would have a severe impact on U.S.-China relations and have announced the launch of a targeted military operation around Taiwan in response. Elsewhere on Wednesday, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky called on China to join the United World and oppose Russia in a virtual address to the Australian National University, especially as China's refusal to condemn Russia's war on Ukraine has fueled speculation over its intentions with Taiwan. 
That's it on the national and international news and Vantage TV's News in Brief. Coming up shortly is Entertainment News. Stay tuned. Hey people, I'm Laifa and you're welcome to Entertainment on the News in Brief, where I bring you the juiciest entertainment stories of the week. So let's get right into it. Burner Boy sets a new record as first African to sell out 20k capacity on tour. The African giant is back with great feats. That's right, Burner Boy at the beginning of the week became the first African to sell out the famous 20,000 capacity State Farm Arena in Atlanta, continuing his winning streak and viral wave of his ongoing tour, Love Damini. Over 20,000 concert goers packed the arena this past Sunday to see Olua Burner's explosive and amazing performance, breaking the record without trying too hard. So Nollywood's end of summer movie list is out. As though all planned, big budget homegrown Nigeria movies are all geared up to take all your coins at the end of summer as they queue up their entries to cinema all through September. Here's all the good stuff to look forward to from the big guns in films such as Jade Oshiberu, Kunle Afolayon, and Moapudu. Eleshi Oba, The King's Horseman, a co-production by Ebony Life Films and Netflix, will make his international debut at the Toronto International Film Festival, TIFF, in September 2022. The drama based on three events in Nigeria is set in 1943 and will be the first Yoruba language film to be included in the coveted special presentation category at TIFF. The original Death and the King's Horseman was a play written by Wale Shoenka and this is the first time that one of his literary works will be adapted for the big screen. The film directed by B. Bamidele will feature Odun Laje Adikola in the lead role as well as Shafi Bello, Deemi Okonlao, Omo Omidada, Jide Kosoko and acclaimed musician Brimo making his screen debut. Producer Jade Oshiberu of Grey Studios has launched the official trailer for her forthcoming action thriller Brotherhood ahead of its September 23rd, 2022 theatrical debut. Based on twin brothers on opposite sides of the law, Brotherhood boasts of a star-studded cast including Bright Basket Mouse Okocha, Tony Tones, O.C. Ukeje, led by Fowles and Toby Bakre, who played the twins. Produced and co-written by Jade Oshiberu, Grey Studios has hinted that the new title will premiere simultaneously in 12 countries, even as they gear up to hit a 1 billion mark at the box office. A first look teaser for the soon to be released feature film Passport has also been launched by Vincent Okonkwo's VSL Media. Also pegged for premiering in September, the Dimeji Ajibola directed comedy is set around a rich brat played by Jim Ike who is forced to work together with a hood rascal played by Mercy Johnson to recover his stolen passport. In addition to the leads, Passport also stars Ade Dimeji Latif, Jide Kosoko and is looking forward to being the comedic crowd clincher for cinemas in September. Kunle Afolaya's epic movie Anikolakbo is also lined up for a September 30th, 2022 release on Netflix. From first looks, the movie stars among several Shola Shobowale and Bimbo Ademoye with Kunle Remy as the title character who travels to the historic Oyo Kingdom in search of greener pastures. I'm sure you're wondering if the film has anything to do with the most famous Anikolakbo, the legendary fella. Well, let's wait and see. Big shout out to media personality Uti Mwachuku on landing on the fourth floor this week. And that's it guys for the entertainment segment, but sit back, relax as sports comes right up. It's another week in sports on the News and Brief. I am Emilio Mena Substance and these are the top stories. We get off the tracks with athletics. This week, Nigeria secured her first ever gold in Commonwealth Games Women's Discus event. Reigning African champion Choma Onyekwe made history on Tuesday night at the Alexandra Stadium in Birmingham as her season's best throw of 61.70 meters was good enough to earn her the top spot. Aside from Onyekwe's goal, the current national champion of Yageri Amechi also got on the podium, clinching the bronze medal in the event. Team Nigeria at the end of day five now has eight medals, three gold, one silver and four bronze, but have dropped to the tenth spot on the medals table. Australia still leads the medals table with a total of 86 medals, 34 gold, 24 silver and 28 bronze, while hosts England are second with 27 gold, 28 silver and 17 bronze with a total of 72 medals. And now, golf. Phil Mickelson and Ian Poulter are among 11 LIV golf players who have filed a lawsuit against the PGA Tour in order to challenge their suspensions. The PGA Tour suspended all of its members who have signed up to the controversial Saudi-backed LIV series, which is in its inaugural season. 
2020 US Open champion Bryson DeChambeau has also put his name to the antitrust lawsuit. The group argued that the PGA Tour is trying to harm their careers, as its conduct serves no purpose other than to foreclose the entry of the first meaningful competitive threat the Tour has faced in decades. And now, football. Napoli president Aurelio De Laurentiis revealed that the only condition for the Serie A club to sign African players is if the players sign an agreement backing out of the Africa Cup of Nations. Otherwise, the club will not be in the market for players from the continent. Currently on the Italian club squad list is Nigerian striker Victor Oshimen and Cameroon international Andre Zambo Anguisa. Senegal defender Kalido Koulibaly was another African player with Napoli who featured in the last AFCON in 2021 and went on to lift the trophy for the first time ever with the Lions of Teranga, but left this summer to sign for Chelsea. Still talking football, Bafana Bafana all-time top scorer Benny McCarthy joined Eric Ten Hag's coaching team last week and the former Amazulu head coach will mainly focus on helping players with positioning and attacking. Benny has achieved a lot in the game, a Champions League winner, league winner in Holland and Portugal, Golden Boot winner at the 1998 Nations Cup and in Portugal, and will bring a wealth of experience to Man U's Ten Hag's coaching staff. And the big news in football, of course, is the return of the English Premier League, the Italian Serie A, the French League On, and of course, the German Bundesliga and every other league around the world. We look forward to a very, very interesting league that is going to run from now till November before the World Cup starts. And that's sports on the News and Brief. Follow Vantage TV for all the news, sports and entertainment. I am Emilio Menesubstance. Till I come again next week, remember to like, share and subscribe.